Hello once again, it's Alex Horton here with another video of learning C Sharp Fundamentals from Scratch. Um, as always, my two caveats. This is uh, being done by a guy who is not the best developer in the world, obviously, and not the worst developer in the world. There may be some things I'm skipping over, I could do better. Please, those who are more experienced than I am, let me know constructively, please, in the comments down below these videos. And then uh, the other caveat that I had is, as always, um, you can learn a lot from YouTube and the internet and just and Google, uh, but it won't um, it, it won't substitute you learning in a formal classroom environment. Um, it's always best to learn from somebody that is either licensed or you know certified or accredited uh, and really knows what they're doing or you just know that somebody that knows what they're doing um, so you can glean a lot of knowledge on your own but then for those more complex things you might want to have a chat with somebody that you know knows what they're doing so with that let's begin so today we're going to talk about encapsulas encapsulation uh, encapsulation is very close to or very uh, it's related closely with abstraction and we're going to talk about abstraction in the next video probably um, it's one of the four pillars of uh, object-oriented programming and what is encapsulation encapsulation is an object's ability to hide data and behavior that are not necessary to the user well, what the heck does that mean? Well, it means that if you want to keep variables, properties, methods, functions, anything that you don't want uh, a class, a derived class, or um, you know, a class that is referencing uh, another class that's referencing your your class to be able to see that logic, uh, you can use um, encapsulation. Encapsulation in C Sharp uses access modifiers, and we'll get into some of those in a minute. Uh, it's very, like I said earlier, it's very closely related to abstraction, which allows access to objects, data, and behavior. So let's get a picture of how encapsulation kind of works. Think of a club. You're a club owner, and you have a very long list of people that want to get into your club but you want to keep the unsavory element out of your club or you want to restrict the the level of access that people have to certain parts of your club so think of um access modifiers as being a bouncer okay or a doorman they're there or they're used to allow certain individuals access to your club. And they also keep people out of your club. Okay. So allowing individuals into your club would be abstraction and denying access would be encapsulation. Okay. That's why they kind of work together. So let's go into our C sharp and let's see what we can kind of come up with that gives us an idea of how this might work. So let's create a new project and we're going to create a Windows form app today. So go to desktop, C sharp, and it's right there. And I'm going to just call this, um, encapsulation uh, form app and just say create <clears throat> so let's view the code real quick so here we see our form that we created is inheriting yet again from this form class this Windows form class so let's right click on that and go to the definition of that Windows form class. So in this Windows form class, which is basically another 
a, a DLL or it's another class library that's included in our in our library of classes and our references and stuff we can see all of these different things that we have access to some of them we can see that you know they're all public some are protected here as we can see some are listed as internal okay and we'll talk about that in just a minute <clears throat> um, one thing that we're going to make sure of is that we understand the ones that are commonly used public private and protected are ones that are commonly used and we'll talk about internal here in a minute well actually let's talk about internal real quick um, uh, internal protected internal and private protected so any kind of you know let's say let's say that you have a, a an on a, a, another club owner who is a competitor of yours okay and that club owner who's a competitor of yours wants to get into your club and you know who they are okay the first thing that we have to understand is that internal protected internal so here's a protected internal internal and and private protected modif access modifiers what they do is they restrict access to classes that are just within your project assembly what do I mean by that you notice this namespace up here we talked about namespaces early on in our in our journey here this namespace is the Windows forms namespace our namespace is encapsulation form application or app okay this means that I can inherit from any other class that I create in my in my namespace here if I create the class I can inherit from it so internal protected internal and private protected aren't going to work for me if I create uh, you know classes and modif and use access modifiers inside of this encapsulation form at namespace okay however if I try to use this you know per, you know if I try to use this process mnemonic and then this is an override so it's different but if I try to use you know something that wasn't overridden I wouldn't I shouldn't be able to see this particular uh, boolean so let's just try it real quick process mnemonic right so if I come over here ooh, so you notice that if I try to grab this and I'll just grab the actual because I cannot spell to save my life here so if I come over here and I put in process mnemonic, you'll notice that I cannot, you know, see that particular. I, I don't have access to that, right? Even though I'm inheriting from this form class, I can't grab that because it's a protected internal. It's only accessible from within this particular namespace up here. Okay. So internal, protected internal, and private protected are ones that you may not see that often depending on what you're doing. Okay, so let me get that out of here. The ones we're going to concentrate on today are public, private, and protected because those are access modifiers that will, you know, you'll be able to see real time inside of you know the assembly that you're creating your classes inside of and in our case it's going to be this namespace encapsulation form app uh, assembly so let's go over here to our project right click and we're going to add a new folder and the reason why we're adding a new folder is because I'm going to keep all of my worker classes that I create um, in this particular folder just to kind of keep them separate here Okay, so I'll just call this worker classes. 
And then what I'm going to do is in this particular work class, I'm going to right click and add a new class. And I'll just call this class um, worker class one. Something real simple, right? So now we've got a class over here called worker class one. And so I can come over here and I can say um, worker classes. Oh, you know, I can't do anything over there. Well, the reason why I can't see anything over there is because I need to reference or, or add a reference to my worker class folder and that class over there. So let's just do that real quick using encapsulation format worker classes. So we'll make sure we've got access to this particular worker class class. So if I can come over and I can say worker class one, WC one equals new worker class one. All right, now it's all fine and dandy, but there's nothing in our worker class. So let's put some stuff in our worker class. We're going to create a real simple couple of variables, and then we'll create a method or something like that. So I'm going to create a string. My actually, this like yeah. Let's let's make a string. String my. string equals new string Oop. equals blah we'll create a, an integer int my int equals zero we'll create a boolean my bool is my bull is my bull and we'll create one last one uh, string ant bull I don't know um, char my char equals Go like that, right? Now, <clears throat> that's all fine and dandy. So now I've got some variables that are part of this worker class, okay? And so by default, um, since I have this particular class inside of this particular namespace, and it's all in part of this assembly, I cannot, because of the way that this format works, I cannot put an access modifier on this class okay and the reason why is because it says hey you created this in this in this assembly you gotta have access to this class now by default classes I believe are you know defined as uh, public right away and I'm probably wrong on that one I think it's um, um, assumed I'm, I'm probably wrong on that one so well let's just look real quick let's see class oops, c sharp class declaration yep so c sharp class declaration i believe that it is internal by default yes so msdn says that is internal by default classes can be nested classes that can be public protected internal protected internal private or private protected okay and then we'll go over here for access modifiers and it talks about the different access modifiers here okay so access modifiers can be used on classes they can be used on um, uh, 
variables in a class or properties of a class, structs, you name it, it can be used on that. Now, what we're going to do, since you know we've gone ahead and we've created a new object of this particular class, if I hit WC1, notice that I can only see the default variables that can be overridden that are part of my worker class. Well, why can't I see those? Well, because I have to add access modifiers. So the first one we're going to use is the public access modifier. That allows you to um, access this particular member of this class um, by any other code in the same assembly, that's this up here, or any other assembly that references it, okay? So now if I come back over here, and I've saved my class over here, and I say WC1, and I hit my IntelliSense, uh, now I can see my string. What do you know? Equals ASDF, all right? So now I have access to this my string. I'm allowing the bouncer to allow access to this my string right here. Let's do the same thing here with this int. So let's make this one private. And we'll save our class again. We'll come back over here. Let me see one. Oh, what the heck? It's not there. Well, the reason why it's not there is because let's say you want some really secretive code to run and it requires you to do something with this int. So for example, a good a good indicator of that is when you create a property. So let's create a property real quick. Um, I haven't getting it, gotten into the properties here yet, but let's create one real quick. So and we're just going to move this int down here, right? So a property allows you to get or set um, a, a, a variable that is based off of a hidden variable and it allows the property allows you to access whatever that value is or set whatever that value is but you never have access to this actual field okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a property prop that's a generic property prop full And what I'm going to do is I'll just call this my int. int. And instead of it being my var, I'm going to call it my int. And let's put, let's make this right here. My underscore my int. Underscore my int. Okay, so. What this does is you notice that this is inst this is a public int my int. So I am uh, I'm being allowed to set the value of this field this my int field through the property and as well as get its value. So if I come over here and I can say let's say I create an int over here and I'll call it my local int equals wc one dot my int. What that's going to do, if I ran this, it would create my local int and would assign it the value of zero because over here we have a zero there. You never actually see this my int field here, right? You only see the property. So that's a good way to protect your fields if you don't want them exposed over here. So it's kind of like um, even though this is your this is your you know this is your bouncer here, um, this is kind of your bouncer's assistant or something like that. This is your actual bouncer here. This is your bouncer here, and this is his, this is the bouncer's supervisor. He's going to give an order to the bouncer. You're thinking that the order comes from the bouncer, but it's actually coming from his supervisor up here, right? If I put a, a five in here, right? 
And let's say I just run this. Let me actually add a button to my form. And then I'll uh, button B U T T O N. All right. Add a quick button. And then I will add a label. And I'll make it a really good sized um, font size here. Let's make it big. Something like that, right? Save that. Double click there. So I'll go to button on click. And I'm going to move this down to here. And notice that this private void, when I made my button on click, that this private void, it's only accessible by code in this class up here. All right, Ooh. in this class. If I came down here and I created another class, class, my class, or struck or whatever, I can't see this button one click. I can say button one underscore click. I can't see that there. But if I take this and I make it public, and I say button one underscore oop, class my class. Let's say I inherit from form one. And I say button one underscore click. Oh, you know what? Let me do it this way. Base. Oop. Base dot. Oop. Ah. This dot. see that particular button click there and I have to pass in the variables like you see there um, an object and then you know my event arcs um, um, array but if I take this off or I change it to private and I try to do the same thing now if in one dot button you'll see that I can't see the button one click any longer. Okay. So that's just an example of private that way, using private that way. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint there and run my form app here. It should pop up here momentarily click that and I'm going to debug so if I hit F10 and I step through my local int will be 5 which is the variable that I had given it over here but I'm referencing the property I'm not referencing the actual integer okay so let's say you wanted to do some really kind of crazy stuff over here right another thing that you can do or that you might see is something like this where you're only doing a get, you're only getting the value, and you can't do a set. All right. So now, if I look, I can only do a get, and if I debug my code again, there I am. It's going to be five. Okay. I can no longer 
say wc1 my int equals 3. I can't do that anymore because all I can do is I can only do a get. I can't do a set. So it's read only over here. Okay. That just has to do with the property method, right? But you can see that protecting this, if I made this a public, then what's going to happen is now that's exposed. We see one over here, and I, I, I don't want that exposed. So that's what your access modifier does. It, it allows the, it allows you to restrict access like a bouncer to code that is over on your classes that are referenced. Okay. So we've talked about public, we've talked about private, and then we'll talk about protected too. So protected, protected gives you the ability to access code in the same class or any code that's derived from that class. So let's, let's put pro protected on this my bool. If I come over here and I say WC1, you notice I can't see my bool, right? But if I create a new class over here, and I inherit from worker class one, I can say um, bool is bool true equals my bool no um, worker class one dot let's do it this way worker class one WC equals base dot. Let's create a constructor. Here we go. And base dot. So what I did there was I created a constructor of this class here, kind of like you see up here. And what I what it allows me to do is it allows me to reference things from this base class that I've you know inherited from. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this oh, no, base dot, and that allows me access to is my bool there. I can have a boolean value here. I can say boolean bool my my bool val, and I can come over and say my bool ooh, my bool val. Ooh, not my bool class. My <laughs> bool val equals whatever the value of that my bool is. Right. So I can do it that way too. So if I come over here and, and I can and I say equals true, then I come over this worker class. Let's see what happens. Press that button. Step into that. Boom! 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 boom. But if I come over and I say WC1 dot uh, my bull class dot I'm doing this wrong. Say the BC one dot. Uh, let me save that. Uh, 
Oh, you know what? I'm referencing the wrong class. My bull class. My bull. My MBC equals new my bull class. And if I come over here and I say MBC. Oops. MBC dot make that public. MBC dot my bull val. And I can make a condition off of this. I can say if that's true, and do some logic home here. something like that right so what that's doing is it's referencing this internal over here I'm sorry this uh, protected bool and so that's allowing me to not be able to access that protected bool over on this WC1 I can't see it over there but since I've inherited from this worker class over here, now I can grab whatever the value of that is and then pass that through this from this derived class over there, like this. Okay. So that in a nutshell, I probably have not explained this the right way anyway, but again, this is we're all here together. Um in a nutshell, that is encapsulation. Um, being able to grant access to uh, parts of your code that you only want them to have certain access to. Okay? And so uh, you would use that to hide code or to allow them to have access to certain pieces of code that you want them to be able to do things with. The next class or the next session that we're going to talk about um, is going to be as we get back to our um, spreadsheet here is we've talked about um, inheritance we just talked about encapsulation next time we're going to talk about abstractism okay abstractism and so um, which has to do with abstract classes, abstract methods, abstract members, stuff like that. So we'll talk about that the next time. So until then, uh, once again, this is uh, hopefully been helpful to everyone. And I'm going to keep making these until people tell me to stop. Till then, have a blessed one.